Hi! In this video, I will tell you, without going into technical details, how to easily recognize tank variants that are used or can be used in the conflict in Ukraine. First, how to easily recognize the basic models. Then, we will move on to the point where I will tell you how to distinguish specific tank variants from each other. There is a lot of information, but individual tank variants differ in most cases in details that are easy to spot, but you need to know where to look at. Enjoy! The tank models are T-64, T-72, T-80, T-84, T-90, and T-14. The simplest part of the tank, by which they can be recognized, are the road wheels, the driver's periscope or periscopes, the exhaust, the placement of the fording tube, or, in some models, which side the infrared searchlight is placed at the front of the turret. In some cases, it is also helpful to know how the machine gun is placed on the commander's capola, which is located on the tank's turret. The first tip are the road wheels, which are located here. T-64 tanks have six of them per side, and they are flat like casino chips. And when viewed from the right angle, they look like Oreo cakes. They are also clearly smaller than in other tanks. In addition, they are located at large even distances from each other. Additionally, the idler wheel, which is located at the front of the hull, at this point, looks the same as the road wheels, unlike in the other tank models discussed in this video. T-72 and T-90 tanks also have six of them per side. They are also spaced at equal distances from each other, but they are much larger and have a characteristic pattern of eight flower petals in older variants, or six flower petals in newer variants. Sometimes happens that they are a mix of both. T-80 and T-84 tanks, although in the T-84, they are largely covered. There are six road wheels per side, and it can be said that they are grouped in pairs, and between the fifth and sixth wheel, when viewed from the front, there is a much larger gap. The T-14 uses an extended T-80U chassis, so the road wheels look the same as the road wheels of the T-80 and T-84, but there are seven of them per side. The second tip is the driver's periscope or periscopes. They're in front of the vehicle, right here. Tank variants that are used, or those that can be used in the conflict in Ukraine, have one or three periscopes. The T-14 Armata is an exception, but more on that in a moment. If at the front of the driver's hatch we see one periscope, or, to put it simply, window, for the purposes of this video, it is the T-64, T-72, or T-90. If three are visible, it is a T-80 or a T-84. In the case of the T-14, as the entire crew, that is the commander, the gunner, and the driver, are in the front part of the hull, we have two hatches in the hull with three periscopes each, and additionally one periscope between these hatches for the gunner. The third tip is the placement of the exhaust. In the T-64 tanks, it is placed at the back of the hull and is about half the width of the tank. In the T-72 and T-90 tanks, it is placed on the left side of the vehicle's hull facing downwards and of a small size. In the T-80 tanks, it is placed at the rear of the hull, as in the T-64, but it's clearly smaller in size, about half the size. Here for comparison, the exhaust on the T-64 and the exhaust on the T-80. In the T-14 tank, the exhaust is located on the right side of the vehicle, and its shape is similar to that of the T-72 and T-90 tanks. The fourth tip is the placement of the fording tube. In the T-64, it is placed at the back of the turret and has the most characteristic shape because it is very long. Sometimes you can even see it when looking from the front of the tank. And it is curved on one side. In the T-80, the fording tube is also located at the rear of the turret and it's also quite large. The exception is the T-80 UD, which has the same fording tube as the T-64. In the T-72 and T-90 tanks, the fording tube is also located at the rear of the turret. However, it is much smaller than this found on the T-64 and T-80. The fifth tip is the placement of the infrared searchlight on the front of the turret. On older variants of the T-64, T-72, and T-80, it is easily recognizable because of its round shape. From the perspective of the observer, looking from the front of the tank, on the older variants of the T-64, it is placed on the right side of the gun and on the older variants of the T-72 and T-80 tanks on the left side of the gun. 
Tip number six. How to distinguish the T-72 from other models is the way the machine gun is placed on the commander's cupola, which is located on the tank's turret in this place. In all T-72 tanks, except for the Ukrainian modification called the T-72 AMT, which was equipped with solutions from the T-64. The machine gun will usually be aimed to the rear. All because the commander's hatch opens to the side, then the machine gun is mounted. It's operated manually by him only with the hatch open. So to use it, the commander must rotate his cupola. To find out which direction the commander's cupola on the T-72 is turned, you need to observe a small infrared searchlight which is mounted on the front. As for the individual variants, we can distinguish five variants of the T-64 tank. B. BM Buat, BM2 Buat, BV, and BV Model 2017. Twelve variants of the T-72 tank. A. AMT, AV, B. Model 1985, B. Model 1989, B1, BA. B3, B3 model 2016, also called T72 B3M, M1, M1R, and UA1. Seven variants of the T80 tank, B, BV, BVM, U, UD, UE1, and UK. Two variants of the T84 tank, U Oplot and BM Oplot. Three variants of the T90 tank, Standard, a and M. And additionally, the T14 Armata. Let's start with the variants of the T64. T64B. The T64B can be recognized like any other T64 by its flat small road wheels that look like Oreo cakes. Or one driver's periscope. Indication that it's a T64B are eight smoke grenade launchers on the turret, four per side and an infrared searchlight placed from the observer's perspective to the right of the gun. Also, this variant does not have explosive reactive armor. Explosive reactive armor is usually placed on Russian and Ukrainian tanks in small bricks. You can see it in the photo of the T-64 BV, about which in a moment. And for the curious, the V on the front of the hull is a breakwater, which is designed to prevent the driver from obstructing the view by the water wave when passing water obstacles. T-64 BM Buat In this variant of the T-64, the armor was significantly strengthened. At first glance, you can see the explosive reactive armor bricks on the hull, turret, three additional pieces of armor on the sides of the tank with six handles, and perhaps the most characteristic rubber skirts on the turret. As this variant uses passive night vision, we will no longer see an infrared searchlight on the front of the turret. The smoke grenade launchers were moved to the rear sides of the turret. In addition, we look at elements such as road wheels or a single driver's periscope. T-64 BM-2 Buat The T-64 BM-2 Buat is similar to the T-64 BM Buat. However, it can be easily recognized by the two rubber skirts on the lower front part of the hull and the additional cage armor covering the engine compartment. Additionally, the side armor is four pieces so it has eight instead of six handles. T-64 BV The T-64 BV is essentially a T-64B with an added contact one explosive reactive armor. This are those little bricks that make it easy to recognize and a few other improvements, but we're not interested in that at the moment. The ERA is placed on the sides of the hull, its front, and on the top and front of the turret in a characteristic way, that is, it forms a triangle, or it may be called the tip of an arrow, one at the bottom and two layers at the top. The smoke grenade launchers were moved from the front to the left side of the turret. As it is the successor of the T-64B, it has an infrared searchlight at the front of the turret to the right of the gun when viewed from the front. T-64 BV Model 2017 The T-64 BV Model 2017 is very similar to the T-64 BV. It can be recognized by the two rubber skirts on the lower front of the hull. In addition, the active night vision has been replaced, so we will not see the infrared searchlight on the front of the turret. Instead, we have more explosive reactive armor bricks. Now it's time for the T-72 variants. T-72A The T-72A is the oldest variant of this tank used in this conflict. The T-72 tank can be recognized by the characteristic pattern of eight or six flower petals on the road wheels, one driver's periscope, 
the exhaust on the left rear side of the vehicle's hull, the machine gun, which usually points to the rear. Or, in older variants, the infrared searchlight, which is placed on the front part of the turret, to the left of the cannon, when viewed from the front. Originally, the T-72A did not have explosive reactive armor installed. But you can find photos with explosive reactive armor installed. Then, an easy way of identification is a V-shaped breakwater at the front of the hull. Or smoke grenade launchers at the front of the turret. Seven on the right side. And five on the left. T-72 AMT. It's a Ukrainian modernization of the T-72A introduced in 2018, which includes, among others, mounting a machine gun on the commander's cupola as in the T-64 tanks, adding explosive reactive armor of the Ukrainian production Nosh. In addition, the turret and lower front of the hull have rubber skirts. The side armor is similar to that of the T-64 BM-2 Buat, that is, four pieces of side armor with eight handles, and cage armor protecting the engine compartment. Additionally, this type of armor also protects the rear of the turret. T-72AV The T-72AV is a modernization of the T-72A, so in the front of the turret, to the left of the gun, when viewed from the front, you will see a large round infrared searchlight. The smoke grenade launchers were moved from the front of the turret to the left side of the turret, due to the T-72AV being equipped with Contact-1 explosive reactive armor on the front and side of the hull, and the top and front of the turret. However, at the front of the turret, it is placed in a characteristic way. That is, it forms a triangle, or it can be also called the tip of an arrow. This is important, because this is how you distinguish it from the T-72B, which will be discussed in a moment. T-72B Model 1985 T-72B model 1985, usually referred to simply as the T-72B, is a deep modernization of the T-72A. Just like the T-72AV, it is equipped with Contact-1 explosive reactive armor. The easiest way to recognize it is to look at how it was mounted on the front part of the turret, because in the T-72B, it is glued to it, and not like in the T-72AV, it forms an arrow. Additionally, the tank can fire anti-tank guided missiles, so the T-72B site, which is here, is wider. Why is it important? I will tell you in a moment. T-72B Model 1989 As with the T-72B Model 1985, the T-72B Model 1989 will have an infrared searchlight. The difference between the T-72B Model 1989 and the T-72B Model 1985 is that the T-72B Model 1989 uses Contact-5 explosive reactive armor instead of Contact-1 on the front of the turret and on the front and sides of the hull. The Contact-5 armor modules are larger than the Contact-1, so they are easy to recognize. Additional clues are the gaps between the modules at the front of the turret and the characteristic three large squares of Contact-5 armor on the side of the hull. T-72B1 and probably the most difficult to recognize tank, the T-72B1. In appearance, it is the same as the T-72B model 1985, but it cannot fire ATGMs, so it has the T-72A sight, which is smaller. Here, for comparison, the sight of the T-72B model 1985 and the T-72B1. T-72BA the T-72BA is equipped with either the Contact-1 ERA, those smaller rectangular bricks, which are glued on the front of the turret, or with the Contact-5 ERA. Like all older T-72 tank variants, it has an infrared searchlight mounted to the left of the gun, at the front of the turret, when viewed from the front. The easiest element of identification, in this case, is the meteorological sensor mounted on the turret, right here. T-72B3 the T-72B3 is similar to the T-72BA, but only comes with Contact-5 explosive reactive armor. In addition, it does not have an infrared searchlight. Instead, it's equipped with a more modern Sosna U sight. It's this big box right here. T-72B3 Model 2016, also called T-72B3M. T-72B3 Model 2016, also called T-72B3M, is the latest Russian modernization of the T-72. 
This variant is equipped with rubber skirts and 12 blocks of explosive reactive armor modules on the side of the hull, as well as cage armor protecting the engine compartment and the rear of the turret. In addition, huge explosive reactive armor modules are installed at the rear of the turret, five on the right side, and due to the smoke grenade launchers, four on the left in place of the storage compartments, as was with the previous variants of the T-72 or T-90. Another interesting difference by which you can identify the T-72B3M is the single contact 5 armor module on the front of the turret right here. T-72M1 T-72M1 tanks have been delivered to Ukraine by countries like the Czech Republic or Poland. This variant is a license-built T-72A, so they are very similar. But the M1 variant has a different lower hull glasses plate which has a reduced number of mounting points for the mechanical mine clearing device. T-72A has 8, but T-72M1 has only 4. Also, the difference between the T-72A and the T-72M1 is that the T-72M1 has the fording tube located on the left side of the turret. T-72M1R T-72M1R is a Polish modernization of the T-72M1. It can be recognized by new rubber tracks, a bustle rack on the rear of the turret, and the lack of infrared searchlight. Instead, there is a PCT-72 periscope thermal aiming sight with a third-generation thermal imaging camera. T-72UA1 the T-72UA-1 is a Ukrainian modernization of the T-72B-1. Modernization kit includes installation of a new engine or adding explosive reactive armor of the Ukrainian production Nosh. The T-72UA-1 can also be recognized by the rubber skirts on the turret and the lower part of the hull. It's time to discuss the variants of the T-80. T-80B The T-80B is the oldest variant of the T-80 remaining in Russian reserves. The most characteristic elements of the T-80 are the three driver's periscopes, six road wheels per side, grouped in pairs, with a large gap between the fifth and sixth wheel, a large forwarding tube at the rear of the turret, and a small exhaust at the rear. The T-80B can be recognized by the lack of explosive reactive armor, rubber skirts on the side of the hull, overlapping even the front of the tank, or a V-shaped breakwater. T-80BV V in the designations of the Russian tank variants means explosive, so the modification that is visible at first glance for the T-80BV is the addition of Contact-1 explosive reactive armor on the turret and hull. Additionally, a distinctive feature is one line of explosive reactive armor on the side of the hull and two rubber skirts on the lower front part of the hull. T-80BVM The T-80BVM is the latest Russian modernization of the T-80. It includes, among other things, the installation of the Sosna U sight, right here. So on the tank, we will not see the infrared searchlight on the front of the turret to the left of the gun, when viewed from the front. In addition, the armor was strengthened by installing relict explosive reactive armor on the turret and hull. Attention is drawn to the tight relict ERA protection on the turret, in contrast to the Contact 5 ERA. Large explosive reactive armor modules, such as in the T-72B3M, are also mounted on the rear of the turret, but there are six on the left side of the turret and only four on the right. Hull protection on both sides is similar to the T-72B3M, but the distinctive feature are six square holes in the side skirts, which allow for faster identification of this tank variant. In addition, rubber skirts are also present on the front of the hull. T-80U this variant of the T-80 was introduced in 1986. U means improved in Russian. As this is the 1980s variant, there is an infrared searchlight on the front of the turret, classically in T-80 tanks, to the left of the gun, when viewed from the front. The Contact 5 explosive reactive armor was used in the T-80U. The characteristic elements are four smoke grenade launchers in a line on each side of the turret, rubber skirts, and three-piece side armor with six handles, similar to that on the T-64 BM Buat. The characteristic armor on the front of the vehicle's hull also draws attention. In this variant, the breakwater has a shape of a dash. 
In addition, in the T-80U and T-80UK, but more about it later, the machine gun on the turret can be operated by the commander only after opening the hatch and leaning out due to the tight commander's cupola, which means that the machine gun is installed on a separate, very simple base. There are several such bases on the turret, but the machine gun will usually be mounted on the left side when viewed from the front as shown in the photo. T-80UD It's a variation of the T-80U with a diesel engine instead of a gas turbine. It can be recognized by the fording tube from the T-64 or the method of mounting the machine gun on the turret, also like in the T-64, that is above the commander's observation and aiming device. T-80UE1 It's a Russian modernization of the T-80BV, but instead of the Contact 1, the Contact 5 armor was installed on almost the entire tank. Clarifications in a moment. Making the T-80UE1 very similar to the T-80U. By similar, I don't mean identical. It can be recognized by the method of mounting the machine gun on the turret, because in the T-80UE1, it is mounted as in the T-64, that is above the commander's observation and aiming device. The second difference is the lack of an infrared searchlight in the front of the turret. On the left side of the gun, when viewed from the front, it is now replaced by two Contact 1 explosive reactive armor bricks. T-80UK It is a modernization of the T-80U. It can be recognized by the installation of the Stora 1 electro-optical jamming system at the front of the turret. These are the two square headlights on either side of the turret's front. The second difference is the installation of smoke grenade launchers, six on each side of the turret line instead of four. The third difference is the meteorological sensor mounted on top of the turret. It's time to discuss the variants of the T-84. T-84U Oplot the T-84U Oplot was developed based on the T-80UD, so it has three driver's periscopes. It can be recognized by the installation of the Varta Electro-Optical Jamming System of Ukrainian production. These are the two square headlights on either side of the turret's front. The smoke grenade launchers were moved to the sides of the turret, and the rubber armor was cut into smaller strips compared to the T-80UD. Also visible are rubber skirts at the bottom of the hull at the front and longer side skirts that cover the road wheels halfway, which provide additional protection of the sides of the hull and chassis components against short-range anti-tank weapons and enemy infantry. BM Oplot The BM Oplot looks like the T-84U Oplot, but the highly developed side armor along the entire length of the vehicle is visible. When viewed from the front, we have the impression that the tank has held its breath or someone has inflated it. Another characteristic feature is the shape of the rear of the turret. It's time to discuss the variants of the T-90. T-90 The T-90 looks like the T-72B3 at first glance. The same hull, road wheels, or three square modules on the sides of the hull. However, it can be easily recognized because the electro-optical Stora 1 jamming system is installed on the front of the turret. These are the two square headlights on either side of the turret's front. For this reason, the T-90 has no gaps between the Contact 5 armor modules. Another difference to the T-72B3 is the way the machine gun is mounted on the turret, which in the case of the T-90 can be used from inside the tank, so it's mounted above the commander's sighting device. Notice how the six smoke grenade launchers are mounted on the left side of the turret, which are grouped right here. This will come in handy in recognizing the T-90A variant. T-90A Visible changes compared to the standard T-90 include the replacement of tracks. On the side of the standard T-90, you can clearly see the pins connecting the individual sections. Another exhaust tip, or a different method of mounting a smoke grenade launcher on the left side of the turret. Namely, on the T-90A, two launchers from six are moved next to it. Here is the photo for comparison. You can even see it from the rear. An interesting fact is that the placement of the smoke grenade launcher on the right side of the turret is the same on the stock T-90 and T-90A. It's only different on the left side of the turret. T-90M The first T-90M tanks were delivered to the armed forces of the Russian Federation in 2020. Visible changes compared to the T-90A or T-90 include armor reinforcement. The side armor is therefore similar to that of the T-72B3M. 
A very characteristic thing is the addition of an ammo rack at the rear of the turret, which makes it much longer. Here for comparison, the side of the T90A and T90M. The second characteristic thing is the steel anti-accumulation net between the turret and the hull. And at the very end, T14 Armata. The T14 Armata, first presented at the Victory Parade on May 9, 2015, is the first MBT in the world to be equipped with a remotely controlled unmanned turret. As the entire crew of three sits in an armored capsule at the front of the hull, it can be recognized by the two hatches in the hull. In this photo, they are opened, with three periscopes each. In addition, an additional periscope is located between them. This tank has seven road wheels per side, which are the same as in the T-80 tanks. The exhaust is located on the right side of the vehicle, and the engine compartment is protected by cage armor. Interestingly enough, this tank even has a toilet. Let's collect all of this data and try to recognize the tank. First of all, the road wheels. You can see a characteristic flower petal pattern, so it must be a T-72 or T-90. Second, side armor with 12 relict armor modules and 6 rubber parts at the bottom. Third, the rear and visible side of the hull is secured with cage armor. This narrows our options to the T-72B3 model 2016 or the T-90M. But when we look at the turret, we see at first that it is much shorter than the T-90M's turret. And secondly, we see four large explosive reactive armor modules on its left side. By citing only these arguments, we can find out that it is a T-72B3 model 2016. I will add five more photos of the tank for you to recognize. Whoever writes the correct answers in the comments will get a heart.